Hey folks, Army Pilot here to talk about one of my other passions, and that's Purple Martins. Uh, I love these birds. Um, the sound they make in the morning uh, in the evening, uh, very comforting. Um, they're the only bird that is, that is dependent on man for their survival, a relationship that's built up over uh, thousands of years going back to the American Indian. Uh, it's an amazing bird, uh, but it is threatened. Uh, by uh, uh, starlings and other birds that are taking over its uh, its nest. Uh, so uh, I'm going to try to give you some tips on uh, what will help you to become a more successful landlord. If you're just starting out for the first time, uh, these tips should uh, should go a long way to helping you out. Uh, first thing is um, making sure you have the proper house. Um, there's a lot of older houses out there that uh, that have a smaller compartment. Even some of the newer ones that are, that, that are being sold have smaller compartments. You need to have a deep cavity in your house to allow the uh, purple martin to build its its uh, brooding site uh, further back in the nest, uh, and that prevents things like owls uh, and other predators from reaching in and grabbing the, the birds and the babies out. So. Uh, uh, if you have one of the older style um, apartments, you know, with the 12, 10 or 12 apartments in it, uh, I strongly recommend that you convert those over. Just close, uh, to convert them over to half. If you've got 12, make a six apartment complex out of it by simply closing off every other hole and then removing the wall inside to allow the bird to have a larger area to go back and protect itself. And you'll be much more successful, uh, ironically, than having the 12, uh, 12 unit. You want to make sure that the house you have, uh, you can raise and lower it. Uh, as a good, a good landlord will raise and lower your house uh, every few days. Check on it. Make sure it's not being taken over by mites. Making sure that there are no other issues that are taking place inside the house. Checking on the babies. I like to count the eggs. You know, see how many have hatched. That type of thing. And the birds don't mind it at all. They'll fly away for for a little bit and, and they'll come right back. Uh, in fact, I think they almost expect this this to happen. Um, you want to make sure you have starling resistant entry holes. Uh, you'll see a lot of the houses that are still being sold today that have the round holes, the round entry holes. And I, I wish that uh, everyone would get the message, stop making those things. The starlings have taken over this country. They're an invasive species. Uh, introduced uh, here in the 1800s and they have filled the skies and they are not only endangering uh, purple martins but other birds as well. But you need to have a starling resistant entry hole and uh, that doesn't prevent all starlings from getting in but it prevents most of them because the a starling is a fatter bird. The smaller starlings and the younger starlings will still be able to get in and they're very very aggressive and they will kill off your nest. They will kill the babies. I had that experience a few years ago. Uh, where one happened to get in, even though I had a starling resistant entry hole and it po uh, pecked holes uh, in the uh, in all the little birds and killed them. So I don't know if you can see this, but this is a starling resistant entry hole. This is a couple examples. There are others, but the half moon is the type that I have. It's worked very well for me. If you need to get the instructions on how to convert yours over, make sure that you use the exact dimensions that are called for. Uh, go to the go uh, look up the uh, Purple Martin site. There's a there's a, uh, a site there that you can get the exact dimensions for these particular holes and cut them out and convert your doors over. You'll need to lower the doors as well because the Purple Martin will duck down to go under, underneath it. I've also seen some of the, the newer ones that have kind of a, I call it the bat type of entry. It's a rectangular with these with these uh, uh, little nubs that stick up. And what you don't want is the circular hole. Just, I mean, I'm just telling you, uh, it only takes one time for uh, some starlings to get in there to decimate your nest, and they will actually go in each apartment and just kill off the, the babies or poke the poke holes in the eggs. Uh, as far as starlings go, um, you know, you need to trap them. You need to get rid of them. Uh, the ones, the problem ones. Uh, there is a place on YouTube I saw. Uh, you can go ahead and go to YouTube and look up Melcher. N B T. That's M E L C H E R. November Bravo Tango. That's two words. Melcher N B T. And he's got a great site for how to build a, a starling trap. Um, go there and uh, and take care of, take care of those problem birds. Um, 
the back to the to the house, the proper house. When you get the house, uh, you need to make sure that whatever entry hole you use, that the holes are smooth, that the walls of that entry uh, door are smooth. I've seen a lot of the doors that have uh, pieces of metal, shards of metal, or it's sharp. It, they didn't clean them off really well, or make sure that there, there weren't any rough edges. So take some sandpaper and just kind of go over that entry hole to make sure it's a smooth entry. You don't want to change the shape, but just just take a piece of sandpaper and, and make sure that it's smooth. If it if it hurts your finger as you go over it, imagine what it's doing to the bird. It'll eventually start to strip the feathers off the bird, and uh, and uh, could uh, could harm them. Uh, if you're in an area where snakes are a problem, you want to use a snake guard, and that's basically an inverted cone or drum that goes over the bottom of the of the house or over the pole, and it prevents snakes from having to go up around it and get up the pole. I don't have one on my house. Uh, I don't. I have never had a problem with snakes in this area, uh, but uh, uh, if if that's a concern, uh, definitely consider putting a snake guard on. Now as far as the placement of the house, you want to make sure that the house is far enough away uh, the, the, from, from your residence, um, yeah, but not too far away because the birds actually like people. Uh, they feel protected around people. So you want to keep it a minimum, I, I mean I should say a yeah, minimum of 25 feet uh, from, from the house or from tall trees. Uh, if, especially if you're starting one up, um, you'll, you may find that the, uh, the birds are spooked by having tall trees because it provides an area where predators like falcons and hawks and, and owls can sit and, uh, uh, and again the, the birds don't like that. So you may have problems if you have too tall of trees around in the area, so think about your placement there. As far as the maintenance of the house, um, you want to make sure that you're raising and lowering the house every every few days to check on it. Again, I cannot say enough about being a good landlord and checking on your house. The birds don't mind it at all. Uh, if it's the uh, beginning of the season or a house you have never used before, if you've never used the house before, you know, wash it out with soap and water and rinse it really, really well to make sure you've got all the residue out. If it's a house you've used in the past or one you've gotten from somebody else, you want to make sure that all the bacteria and everything is out of it. So I, I wash it out really, really well and use a bleach soap compound to scrub it out. Um, and then again, rinse it really, really well to make sure that all the residue is out and then let it dry and you're ready for the, for the season. Um, also, uh, first thing I do when I'm setting up the house is uh, I apply diatomaceous earth to the house. This takes care of mites and any other uh, crawling insects, uh, infestations. I actually had an infestation of mites before I learned about diatomaceous earth. And it's absolutely amazing. It's completely inert. There's no poison in it. It basically kills the bugs by um, getting into their pores. And this is diatomaceous earth. This is I got this about four years ago, and this is a, this was sixteen dollars for two and a half pounds of it. Um, again, about three or four years ago, and all you simply do is take a teaspoonful of it and spread it into the house. And I like the birds to know that it's there when they first get to the house. The apartment it already has it in it, and then periodically, every I don't know three or four weeks, I'll go ahead and go through the house, and as they're building their nest, I'll apply more diatomaceous earth. You can get this at any good hardware store feed store. It is spelled D-I-A-T-O-M-A-C-E-O-U-S. And this is 100% diatomaceous earth. I, I swear by this. Use it. Uh, it'll go a long way to keeping your mite infestation down. If you see any mites at all, spread it in there. It doesn't harm the birds. Completely inert. Also, eggshells. Um, what I like to do is about uh, uh, two to three weeks after the birds arrive, and they arrive around uh, Valentine's Day and they depart around Labor Day, uh, give or take a, a few weeks. Uh, but after they get here, uh, I will take uh, some eggs from you know our breakfast, wash it off really, really well, wash off the eggs, and then go ahead and bake them in, in the oven for about oh, 20, 30 minutes um, at about uh, 250 to 300 degrees, just to make sure that I kill off all the bacteria and then you crush up those eggshells and put it on all the porches and the purple martins will eat it up they get the calcium that they need uh, build stronger eggs uh, it'll just disappear, you'll like that 
uh, you need to make sure you strip out any sparrows. Sparrows, you know, we like sparrows, but they're also an invasive species and they will take over other nests. Sparrows have no issue finding homes. Purple Martins are dependent on us to provide the homes for them. So don't allow a sparrow family to take up an apartment that is destined for a Purple Martin. Uh, you can easily identify a sparrow nest because they are just full of hay. They will just fill that thing all the way up. Uh, quite different from a starling uh, Purple Martin uh, nest where it's flat and in the back it's, it's kind of cut. Strip those things out with no second thought. Don't even think about it. Don't worry about it. You're not giving, you're not taking away the home. They'll build the nest someplace else. Strip it out immediately. And uh, don't allow that to happen. Um, and anyway, uh, I hope this, uh, this helps you. Uh, these initial tips that I've given you will, should help you go a long way to, having a, to becoming a successful landlord with uh, Purple Martins. Uh, you'll just absolutely love them. Uh, they keep down the bugs. Uh, they eat their weight and bugs every single day. Uh, we have very few mosquitoes here because of them. And uh, in our neighborhood, we probably have um, six or eight homes that have uh, purple, mar or purple martin homes. Um, I've got uh, this one here, which is the 12 apartment complex. I put one up over here. I'll show that to you real quick. That's the other nest. It's just a homemade um, pole with four type gourds that I wanted to try out. I put it up at my neighbor's place. And just to show you, um, this is a normal maintenance that you'll do. They'll, they'll fly away. They kind of sound that alarm. And that's okay. They see a bird fly out. I've had this house for about six years. You can see some of the doors that I converted over. I had the circular doors and then I converted over to the Starling resistant. Notice it's, the entry is right at the bottom of the porch. You can see some of the diatomaceous earth that I've gotten here. Birds don't mind it at all. They're starting to build nests in each one of them. Anyway, it kind of gives you an idea of the things you have to do. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, Army Pilot signing off. Thank you very much.